All right, it is time for my new top 25 roller coasters I have ridden fall 2018. Now, here, I'm just gonna say one thing real quick. I rode not too many coasters after my previous top 25. However, I did get around to a few, and some of the other coasters that I had ridden have changed in placements. And uh, yeah, just wow. This was a really hard list to put together, especially the very ending. There is going to be a really, really strong fight at the end. I mean, the two coasters that come out on top are extremely close, and you guys know what they are. And you will finally find out today which one is going to come out on top. But anyways, let's get right into this top 25. So coming in at the number 25 spot that dropped a little bit was Superman Ride of Steel. Now, I haven't ridden this coaster in a few years, but I do remember it pretty good because it was a, definitely a fun ride. It just kind of disappointed me, you know? It wasn't as good as I was expecting. It was smooth. It was definitely fun. You know, it was a fast ride. The airtime was all right. Like, it was just some sustained floater here and there. But the straight sections were really boring. The helixes weren't too forceful. It's just a nice, fun ride, you know? Nothing too much. But I did hear from my good friend Nick from Beyond the Thrills that it was really, really good this year. So so I don't know, I'll have to go try it again sometime. Number 24 is one of the newer coasters I rode on this list. This is Wild Eagle at Dollywood. This is a B&M wing coaster, and I know some of you are going to make fun of me for putting this on here, but really, it was a fun ride. I mean, I think it's quite overhated, actually. This was a really good coaster. You know, some people give this coaster a lot of hate just because it was, like, the first wing coaster to come to America and the fact that it's just kind of dumb. Well, I didn't really think so. It's definitely a fun experience. It was newer for me, so it was definitely really cool. The drop was a lot of fun. That was a great drop. Some of these inversions gave some great hang time. They were really high quality and it's overall a nice fun ride definitely should try and get around to it if you're at the park Number 23 is one of my personal favorite classic woodies. This is Comet at Hershey Park. I loved Comet. It was so much fun. Really, really smooth. A high quality coaster. I mean, what more could you want? I mean, it's got some great airtime. It's kind of fast. It has some good pacing throughout it. It's a nice classic woody. You definitely can't go wrong with Comet. You got to ride it when you're at the park. Number 22 is Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. This was a great coaster. Now, I have heard some things about this coaster being rough this year or not being that great of a ride, so that's kind of why I dropped it a little bit, but when I rode it, it was really, really good. Back when it was really hauling, you know, a few years ago when I went, it was just such a fun ride for me, but there are definitely some coasters on this list that are better than it, and I mean, that's just a fact. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I hope to get around to this coaster someday again, maybe in a few years or less than that, but yeah, Kraken was a great ride, and I actually enjoyed it. Number 21 is a classic. This is Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Oh my gosh, I've grown up riding this coaster and it is awesome. Like, seriously, it does not get enough love. Loch Ness Monster is a great ride. It is very smooth, it is long, it is definitely more aggressive than people put it out to be, and those drops are pretty fun. You definitely get some of that tingling in your stomach on the first drop, and it's just such a cool feeling, and those loops are really forceful. If you're in the back row on this coaster, it is that much better. Just overall a great experience, and definitely one of the most memorable coasters on this list for me. So now we've made it into the top 20 and got dropped a little bit. Number 20 is Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. This is the B&M flying coaster at the park. And, you know, it has been a while since I rode Manta. I believe it was like four or five years ago. But I do remember these coasters because SeaWorld was such a memorable experience that I remember them very well. And Manta was really, really good. I liked it. But some of these coasters that are ahead of it are more intense and definitely more enjoyable, in my opinion, because Manta definitely had some pacing issues. It was definitely a fun coaster. The pretzel loop was absolutely incredible. But besides Besides that, all the other parts of the ride were just fun. They're not bad, they're just really fun. And I mean, you know, it is a B&M, so it can't be that good. Ouch. Anyway, moving on to the number 19 spot, we're gonna have Griffin at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This coaster is just absolutely re-rideable. One of the most re-rideable rides on this list. I rode this eight times in a row last time I went to Busch Gardens and I got my first night ride on it. That made it so much better. It's such a fun ride. But after riding it so many times, I realized, you know, this is a great coaster. It's definitely a lot of fun, but it just doesn't really need to be any higher on this list. It is very, very smooth. It is definitely a forceful coaster. I enjoy it. The inversions are a lot of fun. And this coaster even has some ejector airtime moments, which is something you don't really see a lot on these dive coasters, especially with Valraven. I heard that thing has a failed airtime attempt. So that's kind of disappointing. But with Griffin, that's not the case. And that's why it is making it onto this list.
Number 18 is a classic, one of my all-time favorite woodies. It is Grizzly at King's Dominion. This ride is insane. Last time I rode it, I believe, was during Haunt this year in October, and it was running really good. I rode it near the back, I think, and it was very intense, as always. Such an awesome coaster. I mean, you know, a lot of people hate on this ride, but here's what I say. This coaster is so rough that it's stupid. Like, it makes it such a dumb ride, but it's so much fun. That's how bad it is. And you guys know where I get the saying, Grizzly vibes. This is the coaster that does it. I mean, it basically just means so rough that it's fun. That's what these coasters are all about. It is so much fun. It is so rough, but I love it. In at the number 17 spot, we're going to have a really underrated roller coaster. This is Great Bear at Hershey Park. Great Bear is a great invert, no pun intended. This coaster is very, very smooth. Definitely more forceful than people put it out to be. It's a shorter invert. Definitely not too short, but you know what I mean. It is so much fun. I don't know why people don't talk about this coaster enough. I really love Great Bear, and I th definitely think it's one of the most re-rideable coasters on this list. I mean, it doesn't get talked about enough, and the drop is really unique. Those inversions are very forceful. What's not to love. Number 16, this coaster actually dropped down quite a few spots from last time. It is Verbolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Verbolton is an awesome coaster, okay? It is a family coaster, but it is a very high quality family coaster, and it is so much fun. I'd even call it a step-up family coaster. It is very intense. The Black Forest is absolutely incredible. The drop track is such a cool feature. The launches are fun, and my personal favorite part of this ride would probably have to be the very ending. I mean, those turns at the end are pretty forceful, actually. And there are some airtime moments on this ride. They're not too crazy, but they're definitely fun. And this coaster is just such a great experience. You should definitely try and ride it if you get out to the park someday. Down to the top 15 is Tennessee Tornado. To this day, I've ridden this coaster three times, and all three times, it was amazing. This is the greatest aero looper out there. I truly believe it. It is so much fun. Extremely smooth. Very intense. It hauls, too. This thing is fast. That is the problem, though. It is a shorter ride, but it is so much fun, and I think that's why I love it. So smooth. The inversions are very intense, and at the very end, the jump into the brakes is a crazy strong moment of ejector airtime. It was absolutely phenomenal. So... Thumbs up for Tennessee Tornado for me. It's a great ride. Anyway, moving on. Number 14, this dropped a little bit as well. It's Dominator at King's Dominion. Now, Dominator is an awesome ride. I have not rode it since summer, and I was going to ride it when I went in October, but it had an extremely long wait time, so I was not about to do that. But Dominator overall is a great ride. It gets so much hate, it's not even funny. Like, this coaster is extremely intense. It is an aggressive attraction. Like, these inversions are really good. They're really high quality. It is so much fun. Such a crazy ride experience. And Dominator is definitely my favorite B&M floorless. Number 13 dropped drastically. This is Apollo's Chariot at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now, the reasoning why this dropped is for a few things. I looked at some of these coasters in front of it and I realized, you know, Apollo's Chariot is amazing. It really is. But when you look at some of these other coasters, you're just like, wow, they're more intense, they're better experienced, and I loved them more when I got off. Now, Apollo's Chariot is still amazing. I know some people who don't like this coaster and make fun of it. I am not very fond of those people. You know, it's not that bad of a ride. Those people who make fun of it kind of trigger me because this coaster is really good. If you ride it in the summer when it's warmed up, especially night rides in the back row, it is crazy. The airtime is really strong. It's hauling. So much fun. It's such a great ride. I love Apollo's Chariot. And number 12 is Volcano the Blast Coaster. It has been shut down for a long time, but I'm lucky that I've gotten to ride this coaster so many times in the past because it is such an awesome coaster. I cannot wait till it opens back up because it is such a great ride. And when it does open back up, maybe it'll move up in my rankings because last time I rode it was literally the beginning of 2017. Like, that was a long time ago, guys. It's such a great ride, though. I love Volcano. Very, very intense. Extremely unique and pulls some great Gs. And the launch, the first launch, is so incredible. I loved that launch. Number 11 is Afterburn at Carowinds. This is a fantastic BNM invert. It is really, really intense. I mean, your legs completely go numb during that bat wing. The ending corkscrew roll is one of the most whippy elements I've experienced. It is extremely aggressive. Do not ride this if you're not into aggressive rides. Like, I loved Afterburn so much. This is my kind of ride right here. And people say that Montu is more aggressive than this. If that's the case, that's probably going to skyrocket in my rankings. That thing looks incredible anyway. But yeah, Afterburn's an awesome ride. 
Now we're moving on into the top 10, and number 10 is gonna be Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This coaster is so much fun. The launch is crazy. It's my favorite launch I've experienced. It is really intense. It may be shorter, but it packs in a crazy ride. Like, those inversions are insane. The first inversion, I forget what it's called. It's probably something stupid like the Mole Snake Loop. I don't remember where I heard that from. I feel like that was from a Coaster Studios video. I don't really remember though, but that first inversion is crazy fun. I love it so much. It whips you over it. And then there's the Flying Snake snake dive, possibly one of the best inversions I've ever experienced because it is really fast paced and whippy and you just go crazy over it. It's so much fun. And this overall ride is just crazy. It's so rewritable and I love Storm Runner. To this day, it is definitely one of my favorite steel coasters. Number nine is gonna be Alpengeist at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is my personal favorite invert I have ridden because it is really intense. The drop is so good. I mean, those inversions are so tight, dude. Like. They're so much fun, very, very aggressive. All these inversions are so good. Now, there are people who hate on this ride and I think they're absolutely insane. Like Taylor from Coaster Studios thinks this coaster is like the worst ride in the park. He's insane because this ride is definitely best ride in the park, I would say, because it is intense, it's just completely aggressive, the inversions are fantastic and it keeps a really strong pace. It's such a good ride, I love Alpengeist. Number eight is gonna be Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. These are the GCI Dueling Woodies and they are so much fun. I was blown away by how much fun these coasters were. I mean, when you're just racing the other side, it's just such a good feeling and it gives off some really positive vibes. It's definitely not that rough either. The airtime is really strong, definitely on that first hill for sure and it's pretty intense for an older GCI so I really love this coaster. It was so much fun and definitely very underrated. Into the number seven spot, this coaster actually got dropped a few spots. It is Intimidator at Carowinds. This is my favorite B&M hyper I've ridden, and Intimidator is so much fun. I definitely believe it gets a lot of hate, and people just talk trash on this coaster all the time, and it kind of triggers me because I love this coaster. I got to ride it five times, and all five rides were amazing. I believe I did it twice in the front and three times in the back because this coaster is so much fun. It is very smooth. It's fast. The airtime is really good. I mean, maybe I just rode it on a good day because the airtime was really strong flow and it was hauling pretty well actually. I didn't really get bothered by the trims that much and overall this coaster is such a re-rideable experience. I loved Intimidator. Number six is my personal favorite GCI I've ridden. This is Thunderhead at Dollywood. Thunderhead is crazy. This coaster before I recently went to Dollywood was in my top five. Like this coaster is so good. It is a very high quality Woody. It is very intense. The airtime is really strong. There's a lot of ejector moments and it's just crazy. All these turns are so aggressive and packed in so well and it's such a great ride. I mean, some people hate this coaster and I really don't understand why. I mean, sure, it's kind of rough, but that doesn't really bother me. You guys already know I'm into rough rides, so it's not a big deal at all in my opinion. So now we are down to the top five, and the top five was definitely hard to put together. All five of these coasters are so close in my rankings. I love all five of them, but I had to narrow it down to my favorites. So let's start out the number five spot being Fury 325 at Carowinds. Fury is a great coaster. In fact, it is awesome. I did get to ride this coaster about three times. I still haven't gotten any night rides on it, so I believe if I do some night rides, it'll maybe move up in my rankings. But Fury was a lot of fun. It is smooth, it is fast, the turns are really, really heavy duty, and this coaster is overall such a great ride experience. I mean, you can't go wrong with Fury. Sure, I've made jokes about it in the past, but when we get real and down to business, this is definitely a really awesome coaster. I really like Fury. Number four is going to be Twisted Timbers. This is an awesome ride. Twisted Timbers is probably the smoothest coaster I have ever ridden. Like, seriously, I've never ridden a more smooth coaster in my life. It was buttery smooth. The airtime was absolutely out of this world. The three back-to-back -back hills just got stronger and stronger as they went on. The final airtime hill out of those three back-to-backs was pretty aggressive, I must say. The inversions were definitely really fun. The first drop is probably my favorite part of the ride because of how it whips you over it. I've only rode this coaster in the back rows. I've never actually rode anywhere near the front, so that's probably why I enjoy the drop so much. But overall, this coaster is very aggressive. Overall, Twisted Timbers is a fantastic roller coaster. Entering the top three, number three is going to be Skyrush at Hershey Park. Skyrush to this day is one of my personal favorite roller coasters. I believe it could be one of the best roller coasters ever built. It is so intense. I love the restraints. I absolutely love these restraints. They're my favorite ones. Very unpopular opinion, but they're awesome. The airtime is incredibly well sustained and very strong. It's a shorter ride, but it's definitely very well paced, which kind of makes up for it. And it's such an aggressive experience. I mean, you can't go wrong with Skyrush. I mean, some people don't like it. In fact, 
fact, a lot of people don't like it, and I totally respect that. It's definitely a more popular opinion not to like Skyrush, and that's totally fine, but, you know, I'm just one of those different people who uh, is more into this type of a ride. I'm really, really big on intense Intamins, and Skyrush definitely sealed the deal with that one. So, the moment of truth is here. We are down to my top two roller coasters I have ever ridden. Now, one of these coasters I have grown up riding ever since I was a little kid and has been very close to my heart for a long time, and I have loved it and loved it forever and ever. Another coaster absolutely shocked me and destroyed my expectations the other day, and you guys know what both of these coasters are. So, deciding my number one was really hard here. They're so close, and you know, sometimes it's hard to let go to your favorite coasters, but things happen sometimes, and you just love these coasters so much. And your number one that's been your all-time favorite for so long, letting go of that is really hard sometimes. But for some people, that's not the case. And you know, this was really sad for me, but... I didn't want to have to do this, however, coming in at the number two spot is Lightning Rod at Dollywood and Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Let me just tell you something, this could literally be my number one any day. I would not have a problem with calling this my number one coaster at all. In fact, I would be proud to call this my number one, by far. In fact, these two coasters are so close that some days I'm going to be calling this my number one and the other one my number two. That's just how it's going to be from now on. But it's definitely very, very close, but it just didn't quite seal for the number one spot. You know, after I let it sink in for a while over the past few days, I've been thinking about it and I said, you know what? This coaster is incredible. The airtime is phenomenally strong, stupidly strong actually. It is very intense and aggressive, unlike anything I've ever been on before. It is such an overall crazy, crazy crack ride. Like, wow, I did not expect that at all. Lightning Rod is absolutely phenomenal and I would be proud to call this my number one coaster, but that's just not the case for this time. So what's coming in at the number one spot, still hailing as the king from this day out, is Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Now, just because it's my number one now doesn't mean it's always going to be like that. Lightning Rod completely shattered this coaster. I would not be protecting Intimidator 305 as hard as I used to anymore because Lightning Rod nearly crushed it, which means that there are other opportunities out there. There are other coasters that could actually destroy this thing now. With Lightning Rod being called as the second best RMC, who knows what Steel Vengeance is going to bring to the game. So I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But to this day, Intimidator 305 reigns as my number one coaster because of its intensity, its crazy pacing, absolutely phenomenal layout, and overall, my personal favorite coaster I have ever ridden. It's not too far off from Lightning Rod. In fact, they are slim to none from being interchangeable. Extremely close. They are two of my favorite coasters I've ever ridden, and I would not be surprised if they were the two greatest coasters on the planet. They are extremely interchangeable. Some days I'm going to say Lightning Rod's better. Some days I'm going to say I-305 is better. And I-305 comes out as number one because it is incredibly stupidly intense. Extremely insane. That's a crazy battle right there. But Intimidator 305 sadly came out on top. They are two fantastic roller coasters, and I love them both. So anyways, this has been my new top 25 roller coasters I have ridden. And until next time, coaster fans, I will see you later. Oh, yeah.